What I'm going to do is briefly discuss the increased cardiovascular risk of diabetes. Hopefully you're all very familiar with this. And then I'm going to spend most of the time discussing the current treatment options that we do have and the evidence in support or against the year of use. So this raises the next question, which is how low should we go? And this is subgroup analysis from the TNT study that broke up uh, the achieved LDL levels into quintiles with about 2,000 subjects per quintile. So quintile one had LDL levels less than 64 on treatment. Quintile five had LDLs greater than 106. And what you see is there's sort of an LDL dose-dependent benefit, statistically significant reduction in major cardiovascular events, coronary heart disease death, non-fatal MI, and in stroke with the lower LDL compared to the higher LDL cholesterol levels. Now, what was really important in this study too is that there was no increased risk of adverse events, and ever since the original World Health Organization study suggesting an increase in um, uh, cancer rates and, and non-cardiovascular deaths, um, there has been no increase in single mortality at all. So at this point, the data suggests that pushing down LDL cholesterol using statins works and is beneficial. So the National Cholesterol Education Panel was supposed to release its update this spring. It's been pushed back to the fall. Um, I'm not on the panel. Uh, I hope that one of the things that they will consider, and one of the, the uh, sort of emerging theories in the lipid lowering world, is the concept of atherosclerosis as a result of life years of exposure of LDL, rather than this 10-year uh, Framingham prediction that we've been using from the ATP uh, Adult Treatment Panel Guidelines Set 3. So if you think about it, it makes so much sense. Look at patients with uh, familial hypercholesterolemia. These individuals have very high LDL levels, and they have very early events. The homozygotes will have events in childhood. The heterozygotes have events in their 30s and 40s. Conversely, we can look at people who have genetic predispositions to low LDL over their lifetime. So people with PCSK9 or hypobeta mutations who have low LDL lifelong. And studies have suggested that these individuals, despite the presence of other risk factors for cardiovascular disease, have almost no events. Unfortunately, most of us fall in this range. What is normal? I use the term moderate LDL here, but one of the big things that's happening is what is normal? Should we all strive to be at the levels of hypobetas and PCSK9s? We certainly don't want to be at the levels of FHs, but it appears that having moderate dyslipidemia for years leads to events, and this is the target that we're facing. There are two outcome studies going on at this time, AIM High and then HPS to Thrive both of which are uh, going to be several years out, probably, before we have data supporting the use of combination therapy. Both of these studies essentially are comparing statin versus statin plus niacin. So in terms of where we are in the literature right now, I think we do have the coronary drug project suggesting that monotherapy is a suitable alternative in statin intolerant patients. Based on the studies I've shown you, I would suggest that there's probable benefit from statin niacin combination therapy in high-risk patients no adverse effects in diabetes. And I think one of the most interesting things about niacin is we still don't really understand how it works. We don't have uh, a great understanding of um, the mechanisms into its side effects versus its beneficial effects. And so research is ongoing and hopefully we'll learn more as we go. However, we now have a cord. So this was released just a couple months ago. And a cord, of course, was, uh, you'll hear about it again, I believe, in the next talk. And a cord, we've heard about the, the glucose lowering effects. This is the lipid study. In this study, they took type 2 diabetic patients, again, patients who were on simvastatin, and they randomized them to phenofibrate or placebo to ask the question, does the combination therapy with statin fibrate reduce events compared to statin alone? This is the lipid data from the study, and the group that got randomized to statin plus phenofibrate, shown in the red, had no real differences in total cholesterol or LDL cholesterol, but we wouldn't expect them to. There was a significant drop in triglycerides with the use of phenofibrate compared to placebo, and a modest effect increase in HDL, which is about what we would expect with this agent. Fortunately, there's no difference in any of the outcomes from a court. 